Welcome everybody to our virtual college fair for the college fairs of Greater Denver. I see our attendees are starting to come in. That's awesome. Um, just a few housekeeping reminders before we get started with our session today. Your camera and microphones are off, so our college representatives cannot see or hear you. But if you want to ask them any questions, feel free to use the Q&A button on your screen. Just when posing your questions, make sure to put the college that you're um, wanting to ask any questions to with your questions so they know that you're reaching out to them directly in the Q&A. Make sure to sign up for more sessions in the future on the website. And also this session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Denver. Now we're gonna get started with our first institution. I'm gonna hand it over to University of California. All right, awesome, thanks Melissa. And hi everyone, um, my name is Sebastian Franco. I am the admissions counselor for UCSB. Um, I am also the specific representative for all of, the, all, of, all of Colorado. So if you do have any questions, feel free to use the presentation right now. If not, I'll give you my email at the end. Uh, but otherwise, um, I just want to give you a quick overview of UCSB. So on the top left, you will actually see uh, what campus looks like. So we are actually right on the beach. So again, students will have an opportunity to really go and actually either surf or hang out over there if they wanted to just for homework or studying. So a lot of opportunities to do outdoorsy activities all within campus in itself as well. Otherwise, talking about academics, so we do actually have three different colleges. The first one is the College of Letters and Science. This is the one with the most amount of majors, hence the most amount of students. Now this college is not competitive, not selective, no additional requirements. So basically as long as you're admitted to UCSB, you'll automatically be placed into one of those majors. The only two exceptions are music and dance. They do have an addition beforehand, but otherwise no additional requirements needed for any of those majors. Now this college is also great for undeclared students. So if you're not sure what you wanna study, feel comfortable to put that as your first choice. And as well, it's gonna be great for double majoring or majoring and minoring playing with those majors. The second college is the College of Engineering. So this is the smallest college within the UC system, but basically it's gonna be an opportunity for you to do a bachelor's and a master's degree program all together if you wanted to within five years. So it's a five-year program in that sense. It's optional. You can just graduate with a bachelor's degree, but you will have options for both. Otherwise as well, within that College of Engineering, um, that is the only college that is selective at UCSB. So this means that we do have a limit of how many students can get into this college, but no additional requirements. The third and last college is gonna be the College of Credit Studies. This is going to be all about creating something new, something that does not exist. So whether that is finding the cure to cancer or publishing a new book, you will have options to do that as well. Most of the students in this college actually graduate with something published because of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program that we have with a faculty member from the day you start to the day you graduate. So again, you will have those opportunities there for you. The other thing as well about this college is that it's not selective, so we don't have a limit of how many students can get in, but it does have a supplemental application. What that means is that after November 30th, after you submit those applications, you will be receiving that supplemental application asking you for a couple extra things. But again, nothing to worry about right now. This is later on after you submit the application for my seniors. Last couple of things I want to point out. So one of them is going to be within student life. It's going to be um, the sports. So we are a division one institution. We have 19 different sports. Our most popular is by far soccer. But what's even better, every single home game for every sport for every student is free. So you'll have those opportunities to go in there if you wanted to. Then we do have club sports, competitive, not division one yet. And lastly, intramurals. This is just for fun. It's you and your friends competing against other friends on campus. iOS is for fun. But there's always that one friend that just makes it competitive for everybody else. Otherwise, we also have over 500 organizations, all of them started by and for students. So if you don't see the one that you want, just get it started. All it takes is just you, three other friends, and that's it. No extra fees whatsoever. That's why we have so many and they keep on growing. But we all, all the way from the academic ones to the non-academic ones, like the Harry Potter Alliance or my personal favorite, which we don't have at the moment, but we used to have a Costco club. Now I'm making this up. We used to have a Costco club. Their whole mission and purpose was to go to Costco for free samples. That was it. So as you can tell, college students come up with great ideas. So if you don't see it, get it started. And the last thing within student life is residence halls. So we do have eight different residence halls. Students are not required to live on campus, not even their first year if you don't want to. So keep in mind that you do have those options. We do have virtual tours of all of them online. We know with COVID, it might be a little bit more difficult to check those out. So again, you will have those options to see them there. The last thing I want to point out is going to be something for all of the UCs, doesn't matter which one you're applying to, but no UC campus will be using the SAT or SAT at all this year or next year, just in case I have student juniors towards the admissions or scholarship process. So again, just don't worry too much about the SATs or SATs for the UC system. Again, we're not using those for that. All right, and again, I do want to say yes, well, thank you, Lorenzo, for sharing the screen. Unfortunately, I was not able to share my screens today, so I appreciate Lorenzo for helping me out. But with that being said, I'll actually pass it on to him. All right, everybody. Well, thank you all for uh, tuning in. My name is Lorenzo Gamboa. 
I get to represent Santa Clara University, who actually sits on the land of the Ohlone, Ohlone Muwekma people and the tribe, who trace their ancestry back to the Dolores mission, the mission Dolores, Santa Clara, San Jose. And so we think before we start the uh, presentation for allowing us to be on our traditional homelands. So Santa Clara is the oldest university in the state of California. We've been here since 1851 means we are really, really old, but also that we have a lot of connections and a lot of alumni all over the world. So it is a beautiful, beautiful campus, lots of palm trees, lots of beautiful weather. And you guys will get to see this 30, uh, 300 days out of the year. And I myself am a Colorado native. So when I came out here, I woke up winter court and I realized I didn't have to shovel no more snow. I said I could stay here. Okay? It is conveniently located right in the heart of Silicon Valley, right next to San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, Santa Cruz, anything and everything you want to do is literally in your backyard here. But what's most impressive is that this is literally where the world will play. Google, Yahoo, Lockheed, eBay, NASA, Shi Young, KBMY, Price, Waterhouse, Deloitte, Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tesla, the Chronic Arts, Nvidia. They're all gonna be here. I have more jobs, more internships than actually current students enrolled on this campus. Now, what makes us different is that we are a Jesuit institution. And you're gonna hear from another colleague of mine here shortly, but we're in Northern California. So for us, what's the biggest difference is that we care about like what you're going to do with your degree. So we're going to ask you, yes, wonderful. You came in here for business, for engineering or the arts. So what? What are you going to do with this? How are you going to pay it forward to others? If you were looking at us 150 years ago, yes, you were Catholic. But right now, as you see on the screen, 50% of the people say they're Catholic. 50% come from every other denomination. The most important thing is that you must learn how to navigate all aspects of what runs this world. And I always tell mm -hmm. students and parents, one, it's money. Two, is politics. Three, is religion. So no matter what field you're into, make sure that you understand all these pillars. Now, Santa Clara, we're not a big school, but we're not a small school either. 5,500 undergrads, 3,000 grads, looking to climb to be 6,000. But I'm right now, 11 to 1 faculty student ratios, average class 23 to 24, will promise you that you will only be taught by accredited faculty at this university. You'll never have a grad student teaching you here. That's why right now we have one of the highest retention rates and also ability for you guys to graduate in four years. Yes, four years. Most students will graduate with double majors, double minors, studying abroad and do all that here. So for us, we were founded as a liberal arts school. So don't forget, just because we're in Silicon Valley doesn't mean that we only look for business and engineers. I'm very passionate for the arts. So if you're into that, check this campus out as well. But if you're geeky like I was, definitely get enrolled because we do internships and research from the moment you walk into campus to the moment you leave campus. We have a brand new STEM center that is opening up, well, actually already opened up last week. So you guys got to check it out on our website for the virtual information. Other than the academics, I have 20 Division I sports, 19 club sports, and over 150 clubs and organizations. So when everybody's always asking me, what student are you looking for? I want this. Somebody who's willing to challenge my faculty, my staff, push the envelope to be who you want to be and do what our marketing says, invent the life you want to lead. But at the same time, be flexible enough to go paint your face and get on ESPN every once in a while. Plus, housing here is ridiculously nice. The first two years required now at Santa Clara. So you will be guaranteed a house. The only biggest issue that you're going to have is your freshman 15 or your freshman 40. Because at Santa Clara, we love to eat. So this is why I always tell students, you must get involved. That's why right now about 75, 80% of our students are involved in some type of intramural sport every single quarter at Santa Clara, which is exciting. Also, don't forget, it's the Bay Area. This is where every culture, every language, and definitely all the food in the world you can taste within 24 seven access of where you're gonna be at. Now we are only on the common app. So for us, it's all you gotta worry, worry about. And then all the only thing that you have to worry about is what program do I wanna begin my academic adventure in? Is it arts and science? Is it business or is it engineering? The catch is that I will begin 60% into arts and science, only 25% in the school of business and only 15% of you in engineering. You wanna be competitive for business and engineering? I'm expecting calculus level math by senior year. If you do not have calculus level math or your school didn't offer it, then do not worry because I cannot hold that against you. But if your school offered five levels of calculus and you didn't take it, then I'm gonna question what happened. Here is the most important slide for this evening. Take a picture of this. I am very transparent. I do not hide anything. This is how I will break down your application. I do want the bookworm as I told you, but I also want the bookworm who shows me that they understand what they're doing and how they're gonna give it back to the community. So if that's you, then put it all together and show me what I call goodness. The desire, the perseverance to dedicate, make sure that you will survive and complete and to become a Bronco. 
Now your application deadlines are coming up very, very quickly. November 1st for early decision, early action, and regular decision for January 7th and ED2. Now, if you wanna be considered for optimal packaging, as far as financial aid and everything goes, then you must submit the FABSA and the CSS profile. So that way we can consider you for the optimal opportunity of considering Suntec Ladder. Now, if you have other questions, don't hesitate to reach out and stay connected with us. We're on every other platform that you guys can think of. But again, thank you again for being with us and enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll turn it over to my colleagues at USF. All right, like he'd mentioned, University of San Francisco. Thank you so much. So to start off, I'm gonna just drop some information in the chat. My name is Sergio Maravilla. I am an admission counselor with the University of San Francisco. So you can find my email in the chat if you have any questions after this presentation. Um, additionally, I, I added a link for a uh, more information request form. Um, say after this conversation, you wanna learn more about USF, you wanna dive deeper into it. So you can go ahead and fill that out and receive more information via email and see what upcoming events we have. But now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen for a little presentation. And we can get talking about it. Um, so yes. Like it was mentioned before, uh, the University of San Francisco is a private Jesuit Catholic university as well. Um, we do have that same community orientation uh, when it comes to our academics and our programming. Uh, USF is located in the heart of the city of San Francisco, which is a very, very key attribute for a lot of students who wanna come here. Um, we have around 6,000 undergraduate students with an average class size of 22. So another, outside of the city life, uh, that small classroom setting is also really attractive for our students. You're able to you know, dive deeper into your academics, build those personal relationships with your, with your faculty and your peers, and get the most out of your academic experience at USF. Um, we are a pretty diverse institution, um, even more diverse than the city of San Francisco itself, which is really shocking sometimes. On that little graphic, you, you can see we're pretty well represented in our racial and ethnic backgrounds. Um, however, we are very diverse in every, um, other senses of the word as well. For example, our religious diversity is also something we want to highlight. Uh, for those who are, have Catholic background or want to continue practicing their faith, uh, around 23% of our student population are practicing Catholics. Um, and we do have a university ministry as well as relevant programming and resources for students who want to continue doing that. However, for the large majority of our students of different faiths or of no faith background, um, no worries. Our university ministry asks, actually hosts a, a variety of different workshops and uh, programs for different faiths as well. Um, and of course, we want to try our best to support every student, regardless of religious background. Um, additionally, for example, uh, first generation low income status as well is really, really well represented with 30% of, of our student population being first generation college students, meaning their family did not attend a four year institution. And then also 29% of our student population coming from a family background that made less than $50,000 a year. Um, being a first generation low income college student myself, um, I always want to share that USF, although it might be expensive, might be in the Bay Area, um, there are spaces for students of different backgrounds not only survive here, but also thrive here. So we do have really, really uh, um, very well done resources that can help you transition as well as prepare you for after college. Uh, for example, we have our intercultural center we have here on campus that supports a variety of identities, identities on campus um, and provides relevant resources and programming just you know help students feel supported. We also have our gender sexuality center on our campus as well. Once again, providing the relevant resources um, which is actually kind of unique for a Jesuit Catholic University to promote that kind of stuff, but we are committed to diversity at, here at USF um, as it is one of our values. Um, our Jesuit values range from our, you know, care for the whole person, which is, you know, your mind, your body, and your soul, however you define it. We just want to make sure that you are doing well holistically. Uh, second value is being people for others. You know, you're going to go through your college career, um, obtain your college degree, and hopefully pursue your career aspirations. However, we want to have this kind of conversations is how do you look in a community setting? How are you doing uh, things for others? And then the last one is commitment to diversity as you can see from our little graphic. Here in this, on this slide, um, although it's a cartoon, it is pretty well uh, accurate in regards to where we're located in the city of San Francisco. Um, as you can see to our west, you'll find the financial district where a lot of our students get highly coveted internships and job opportunities, um, as well as uh, some major sporting venues such as the SF Giants and then the warriors as well. Um, additionally, to the north, you'll have Muir Woods National Park. So if anyone here, you like, I love the city, but also love nature, we have some good uh, uh, division from that as well. 
And honestly, just down the street from USF, you'll find the Golden Gate Park, which has a lot of green spaces as well as some very well um, museums as well. Um, additionally, with your tuition and fees, you actually have access to the bus system in SF. So if you live off campus or if you have an internship uh, off campus, uh, the buses is a really easy way to get around. And just having that free access is also very uh, beneficial. Um, additionally, your college experience is going to be unique. Um, and some students, you know, want to come to the city and have their whole life here. Some students just want to come for, you know, the two to six years that they'll uh, be doing their higher education. But to have that kind of experience in such a diverse and uh, inclusive environment is really, really impactful for your own personal growth and also just learn more about around the um, about the communities around you as well. In regards to our academics, we have over 110 different majors, minors, and different concentrations that you can choose from. We have two direct entry programs for our nursing and engineering, um, which means you will basically have to apply to those programs separately, and you cannot change your major after that. You have to stick with that until you graduate. But for every other degree, you'll have pretty free, free range. If you want to change it, add a double major, maybe some minors along the way. Um, and then once again, we do want to reflect our Jesuit values within our academics as well. Um, so specifically including that community engaged learning aspect into your classes. Uh, for example, you might be an engineering major, but taking like a course on how engineering impacts society um, at a community level is really, really something that we have to offer at USF. Additionally, we have some accelerated programs that are really interesting for our students, such as our um, undergraduate degree plus our teaching credential program or our accelerated uh, three plus three program with our school of law. So if anyone wants to be a lawyer or a teacher, we do have programs that can help you um, kind of shoot forward to your career and give you all the, ac uh, all the academics that you need. Um, in addition for that nursing program, uh, for any nursing students out there, we do have some specific requirements, but with by the end of it, you'll have your Bachelor of Science in Nursing, have done some clinical rounds, have some experience in the classroom as well as in the field. So you will be able to be a full-time registered nurse by the end of that four years as well. In regard to um, the process, we also use a common application. Just go ahead and Google common application in search of the University of San Francisco. We will require official and unofficial transcripts along with a short essay, just basically asking how you connect with the Jesuit values from a religious standpoint or a non-religious standpoint. Um, if you can connect with, with uh, care for the whole person, being people for others, or commitment to diversity, we want to hear that. Additionally, we'll, we are test optional. So if you've taken the SAT or ACT, please feel, feel, feel free to submit those. Um, they'll be based for merit scholarships. However, you, we will not review your application um, or it won't penalize you if you don't take it. Additionally, we're the letter recommendation and we are optional for that. However, once again, you do not have to submit it if you do not want to. Um, additionally, you can see that we have some deadlines coming up. Uh, early action, early decision deadline is November 1st. So if you want to figure out your decision wait, uh, by the end of the year, we'll have that. Uh, however, if you want to work on your application a little bit longer, um, give it some more time, our regular decision deadline is January 15th. And then also it's important to note that we do uh, accept students on a rolling basis. So if we don't have enough seats, we'll continue um, accepting students, letting them out, and letting them know, but still try to get it in by the deadline. So, you know, you'll, you'll know you'll have a seat. But of course, uh, please stay in touch. Here is some... Um, uh, Instagram handles, also check us out online. We do have some virtual events if you want to continue learning more and visiting our, uh, or visiting our campus. So feel free to send me any questions with that email and I'm excited to hear from you all. Thank you all so much and please take care. Awesome job. Next up we have Pitzer College. All right, give me one second as I go ahead and start my screen share. Um, oops, there we go. Alrighty. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Natalia Duran. I am the Assistant Director of Admission at Pitzer College. Um, a couple of things to know about me. I'm an alum from Pitzer. I graduated back in 2019, um, but we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about Pitzer. So who is Pitzer? Um, Pitzer is a small private liberal arts college located in Southern California. So we're about 45 minutes east of Los Angeles. Um, the big thing to know is that we are part of what's known as the Claremont Colleges or the Claremont Consortium. That is the only intentional consortium in the entire United States. All the schools are located within about one square mile, meaning you can get from Pitzer's campus to Pomona's campus in less than 15 minutes. We do share classes. You have the opportunity to take about a third of your classes 
off of your home institution's campus, meaning you can study at Pomona, Harvey Mudd, Claremont McKenna, Scripps, or Pitzer. Um, you will have that opportunity to also eat at all the other campuses. We do partner for sports. So for Pitzer, it's Pomona and Pitzer together. And our rivals are across the street. We call it the Sixth Street Rivalry. Um, and that's Harvey Mudd, Scripps, and Claremont McKenna together. So those are a couple of big things to know right off the bat about us. Um, but Pitzer was founded in 1963. And the big thing to know about the different Claremont colleges is that every single one has a very distinct personality personality. And I mentioned our founding year because that plays into our personality. So um, for Pitzer, we were founded in the 1960s, right as the same year as the March on Washington. One really big thing to know about that decade um, is that obviously you had the civil rights movement, but you also had the Chicano movement, the farm market movement, the environmental movement, the arm, or there's so many different movements that happened, to be honest. Um, but that was basically a decade of civil unrest. And so because of that, Pitzer has these five core values. Um, these are the really big things to know about our institution. And this is going to help you in the application process later on because we do have a supplemental essay. Um, if you choose that prompt, it does have to do with these core values. Each of these core values is a reflection of a different social movement that happened in the 1960s. And so that's kind of what you're going to see. Um, social responsibility, we usually tie it back to the civil rights movement, intercultural understanding, back to the farm workers movement, just to give you an idea of what these look like. <clears throat> So the reason why I mentioned these is because our core values, they play into not just our admissions process, but they also play into our graduation requirements. They play into everyday life on campus, whether you're in a committee, whether you're a part of anything on campus, to be honest, whether you want to start a club, you really have to dive into these different core values. And that's the reason why I want to talk about them today and just give you a really brief understanding of what they look like. Um, the big thing to know about environmental sustainability is that Pitzer does not look like most other colleges. 75% of our campus is actually landscaped um, and looks like Southern California because it's intentional. It's landscaped with native Southern California greenery. Um, so you come to our campus, the first photo you saw on the slide is our dorms. It's uh, it's completely full of cacti, succulents, sagebrush, all of these native plants. We do have hundreds of different endangered species on our campus. We actually also have an arboretum that we take care of. And those dorms that you saw on that first slide, they're actually gold lead certified. We also have platinum lead certified buildings on our campus. So there are a bunch of different ways that we interact with environmental sustainability. Um, that's something that you'll see in terms of fellowships, scholarships, and internship opportunities on our campus as well. As far as intercultural understanding, I'd like to talk about study abroad because we have 60 different study abroad programs on our campus and we have some of the most sought after in the entire consortium. That's because Pitzer actually has direct run study abroad programs where A1, you don't need to know the language before you go to the country because you have Pitzer professors in those countries awaiting your arrival. We actually do have departments and um, actual facilities in those countries. So whether you're actually going to the Firestone Ecology Center in Costa Rica or whether you're going to our partnership in Brazil, it's up to you to decide on any of those different programs. The other things to really note about those programs is that you come back ahead on credits to graduate. You actually do have, um, you stay with host families. You do go with a cohort and like I said, they're just the most sought after. Um, so there are a couple of different things to note about those programs. As far as intercultural understanding, I like to talk, or as far as interdisciplinary learning, sorry. <clears throat> My throat is like totally going away. Uh, but in our disciplinary learning, the big thing to know about Pitzer is obviously we're a liberal arts college. And like I mentioned, you have the opportunity to study at any of the different Claremont colleges. We have 40 different majors on our campus and 20 different minors here that are available to you. But you actually have the opportunity to major at any of the different Claremont colleges. So it is up to you to decide what you want to do. The reason why you would pick Pitzer over any of the other Claremont colleges is because if you really like those five core values, you want that as a backdrop to your education. You really want social justice, um, you really want to make sure that that is the backdrop to your education, then Pitzer would be the right fit for you. And you would be able to take a major from any of the other colleges. So whether it's, you know, Latin American studies over at um, Pomona, or whether you want to take legal studies over at Scripps, it's up to you. You would be able to take any of those. You would have an advisor both at Pitzer and at um, one of the other institutions that you take the major from, and you would graduate in that sense. So that's one thing as far as interdisciplinary learning, as far as social responsibility, Pitzer does a big part in in terms of our graduation requirements, you are actually required to get involved in the Southern California community in some way, shape, or form, and that is through your social justice praxis um, graduation requirement. So whether you're involved in, let's say, um, I'm trying to think, LGBTQ advocacy, uh, whether you're involved in immigration rights, whether you're involved in um, women's rights, it's literally up to you to decide what you want to do, but with hundreds of partnerships through the Community Engagement Center, you can look it up or you can email me and I can tell you about the different ones that I did because I did that graduation requirement three times despite it only being required once because they're most sought, they are the most sought after classes 
at all the five colleges. So that's one big thing there. Um, lastly, as far as the last core value that I really just do want to mention is student engagement. Um, like I mentioned, we do partner for sports. So we do have intramural um, division three. So that's uh, division three varsity. We have 21 different teams and we also do have club sports. So hundreds of different opportunities at your fingertips, totally up to how you want to do it. And as far as the application process, I do want to mention a couple of things. We're exclusively on the Common App. We have three different rounds of admission. That is early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. Um, early decision one, that deadline is coming up on November 15th and early decision two and regular decision are both on January 7th. Pitzer is now test free. We actually used to be the only test or the number one test optional school on the West Coast, completely test free. So those are the big things to know about Pitzer. Um, if you, I'm going to go ahead and put my email in the chat, but feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. All right, next up we have Whittier College. Well, hello, my name is Megan Poston. I'm the Associate Director of Admission, uh, but let me share my screen real quick with you before we get started. Let me put on present mode. Wonderful. So Whittier College is located in Southern California. Um, we're about 30 minutes outside of downtown LA, as well as um, about 15 minutes outside of um, Orange County as well. So we straddle both counties. Um, so you get the best of both worlds when it comes to the beaches, um, when it comes to in internships, fellowship opportunities. There's a lot of industry just right in our backyard and a lot of ways for students to explore, whether it's going outdoors, hiking, or again, going back to those internships and getting some experience outside of the classroom. Uh, when it comes to our whole campus, right now we have 1,700 uh, traditional undergraduates. So we are a small liberal arts college. Um, our students have a lot of opportunities for hands-on learning and being able to work with their professors throughout their four years. Um, so you'll have access to your professors no matter what class you take, and you'll always be taught by your professors, never a grad assistant or another student on campus. Um, our classrooms are small, so on average, you'll have about uh, 19 students, but as you get into your major courses, those classes tend to cut down um, quite a bit, anywhere between um, 12 to 8 students, and we do that on purpose so that you have opportunities to interact with your classmates, work on projects, as well as have opportunities and access to research with your faculty one-on-one. -on -one. When it comes to our academic offerings, um, we do have over 33 different majors offered to students, um, everything ranging from business, business administration, economics, um, English, psychology, our STEM programs are really strong on campus. We have a science and learning center. Um, it's one of our biggest buildings on campus. And the main focus of that center is to put science on display. So all of our students are able to see the different resource, um, resources and different research our students are doing with in the STEM programs. Um, some programs are interesting to our campus as our Whittier Scholars Program, and that's a self-designed major. It's an opportunity for you to take your education in your own hands, and it's built very much like a graduate program. So if you have two interests or if you want to do like business with like marketing or sports medicine, you can combine those different areas or you can create a topic from the ground up. Um, so it's really up to you on where, what you'd like to do with your education. Um, but you work with faculty and build it and decide what curriculum you'll be taking all four years. Um, we also have some pre-professional programs in pre-physical therapy and pre-med as well. So there's a lot of opportunities in there. And then we also have an engineering 3-2 program. Um, but students are able to double major, minor, have two minors, um, and you can still graduate in four years. And we don't require students to declare a major until the end of their sophomore year. So you have plenty of time to explore the different topics that maybe you haven't been exposed to at the high school level. And the next item I want to talk about is our campus community. So our campus, since we are a small campus, we are very close knit and very uh, community based. Um, so we have tons of opportunities for you to get involved in the local community, um, whether that's through service, internships, fellowships. Um, we'll have an Office of Equity and Inclusion. So for you to get involved um, based off of your identity, whether that's um, in the LGBT community or based off of your culture and um, identity as well. Um, we are a residential campus. So um, right now, due to COVID-19, we are not requiring students to live on campus. But typically, we do um, on a normal year, we'll require students to live on campus for um, the first three years. And so that creates more of a community on campus. 
and allows our students to get to know each other as well as build a greater community. Um, we have over um, six different residence halls with different learning communities. One um, learning community that's pretty interesting is we have a pet friendly residence hall. So if you have an animal that you wanna bring with you, your pet dog that you can't live without, a, without you can bring them to campus if you'd like. Um, when it comes to financial aid, Whittier has many opportunities to help fund your education. We have the John Greenleaf Whittier Scholarship, which is awarded to every student that applies to Whittier College and is admitted. And those range as low as $10,000 up to $36,000 a year. Um, we also provide need-based aid through the FAFSA application, as well as we accept the Cal Grant. We also have a leadership scholarship. So if you're an active leader on your campus, you can get involved and apply for the scholarship and you only have to do about eight to 10 hours of community service on our campus. We also have the talent scholarship in music, art, theater, and theater tech. And then if your family members, your parents or siblings were alumni, there are scholarship opportunities for you. Um, and then we have a broad oak scholarship. So if you attended the elementary school um, that's on our campus, um, you can also receive a scholarship. And then we also go through Raise Me if you are earning those micro scholarships already. Um, as far as our admission process, um, we are a holistic application review process. So each element plays a role in the review. So your personal statement, letter of recommendation from either a teacher or counselor, and then your high school transcripts. And we are test optional, but you have the option to submit your scores if you'd like. Um, this last year, we saw about 80% of our students that went test optional this year. So it definitely increased due to the pandemic. But on the right side um, here, you can see our um, GPA range, our SAT and ACT ranges, and then our application deadlines for early action is coming up in November 5th, on November 15th, and we have our regular decision on February 1st. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll put my contact in the chat. These are all of our admission counselors, but um, this is my contact here, and I read all the applications for Colorado. But thank you so much. Right. And last but not least, we have the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. All righty, great. Thank you so much. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. Okay. Well, all right, there we go. And let me just go into uh, full screen mode here. All right, there we go. Awesome. And uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen McDowell, and um, I'm a college representative with FITM. And FITM, we are located in Los Angeles, California. We're a smaller private um, applied arts college. Uh, we have about 3,000 students. And um, I'll share with you a few unique features about FITM. Um, again, of course, our location, we're located in the South Park District of uh, downtown LA, right in the heart of the largest uh, design district in the United States. We're about a five minute walk away from the Staples Center and about I'd estimate about an eight minute walk away from the uh, fashion design district. Um, we do offer students the opportunity to earn specialized and accredited bachelor's degrees, associate degrees, and we also are offering a graduate school where we do offer opportunities for students to earn an MBA degree. Now, what's unique about FITM, uh, we are an applied arts college. However, the curriculum is designed so students will be able to focus on the business of design along with the design of business. We're currently offering students 20 plus majors. Uh, we are offering some very unique uh, majors that are only offered at FITM. For example, uh, uh, menswear. FITM is the only accredited four-year college that's offering a menswear program. And on the business side, we're the only accredited four-year college in the United States that's offering business of denim. Um, another unique feature about FITM, because of our Los Angeles location and our focus on the applied arts, we are partnered with many, many major brands um, across the uh, Los Angeles area and also around the country. Uh, some of our industry partners include Nike, Victoria's Secret, Kiehl's, Disney, and uh, several other uh, industry partners. Um, we do invite you all to connect with us. Uh, as far as uh, scholarship opportunities at FITM, we are offering a ton 
plethora of uh, scholarship opportunities. We are uh, national collegiate partners with DECA, FCCLA, the National Art Honor Society, along with Phi Theta Kappa. So if you're high school students involved in any of those organizations, those are automatic scholarship opportunities. Also, we're offering up to $40,000 in scholarship opportunities through our FITM Fashion Club program. Um, we are at the forefront of sustainability at FITM. Um, as far as the campus environment, as I mentioned, we are a smaller college. Uh, we have about 3,000 students studying at our Los Angeles campus. Uh, class sizes uh, per instructor usually range between 10 to uh, 15 students. And FITM was founded back in 1969. And um, over our 50 plus year history, we have graduated well over 65,000 students. Um, we do invite you to connect with us. Um, I'll drop my information in just a quick second in the chat for you. But as far as um, admission requirements, uh, we'll take a look at your uh, transcripts from high school. Uh, we do ask for two letters of recommendation. FITM has always been test optional. So if you have taken the SATs or ACTs, we do encourage you to go ahead and submit those test scores. Um, as an applied arts college, we do have a portfolio requirement. And there's also a written essay component along with uh, two admissions interviews. Uh, we've always done rolling admissions, so we don't have that added pressure of the admissions uh, deadline. We're on a quarter system, so our classes do start every uh, January, April, July, and October. All right, so I, at this point, I'll turn it back over to Melissa. Awesome, thanks so much. At this point, I'm going to invite all of our reps to turn their cameras back on. Um, so I do have one question for everyone to kind of pose to the group. And um, we're going to go in the same order that we presented this evening um, for the session. And the question that I have for everybody is, what piece of advice do you have for students going through the college search process right now? Um, and we're going to start it off with University of California. Um, so I would say one of the biggest ones is take the initiative to ask questions to any of the admissions counselors. That's no matter which university you're applying to or you're thinking about, ask us the questions. Um, there's tons of misconceptions and false information going around. And I know all of the counselors, we hear it all the time, um, just misinformation. So again, really make sure that when you have a question, you're wondering about something, just talk to us. We are more than glad to help you out. That's what we're here for. Um, so again, if you have any questions, let us know um, so that we can make sure that you are getting the right information in that sense. I would say, um, you know, breathe, <laughs> enjoy the process. I know it's kind of crazy because um, I mean, many of you were sophomores when all of this happened and now you woke up and now all of a sudden you're seniors, right? And so you're trying to figure all of it um, and you're afraid that you might make a mistake because you didn't get X and Y and Z all put together. Um, but as Sebastian just mentioned, you know, we're here for you. So reach out. We're here to advocate and support you. Don't sell yourself off short just thinking because you put a barrier in front of it. Uh, for me, I'd probably say um, to do your research. Um, I know name brands might be very, you know, attractive sometimes, but you know, location, the cost, uh, student organizations, like there's so much that goes behind the university that's going to be really, really beneficial for your college experience. So um, that's probably the advice I would give my younger self, like to do more research in institutions, because there's a lot of information out there. And yeah, once again, reach out, because we'd always love to share more about institutions like ourselves. Yeah, so I would say at this point to take advantage of the virtual resources. I don't think everybody understands just how accessible a lot of these colleges have made themselves because of COVID. They've had to shift and really kind of make sure that Everything is at online. You have the, uh, the opportunity to access anything and everything you wanna know. There's millions of videos from most of these institutions out there that you can do. There's so many students that even started blogs and stuff like that. So you can really get the student perspective. I would say really take advantage of all of that and just kind of learn more about the institution. Even if you're just kind of a little interested, you never know, there might be some kind of hidden gem in there that's gonna hide or that's gonna surprise you. 
the piece of advice I would provide is be yourself um, through the application process. Don't stress out too much about what you're filling in in the activities or the essay, but just be your genuine self. It definitely shines through when we're reading your application. So take the time to really think about the topic you're choosing for your essay and just be your true self because that will definitely shine um, as we're reviewing your application for admission. Oh, sorry, it's my turn. <laughs> okay, um, sorry about that. It's zoned out for a quick second. But um, yeah, I would say, you know, my best advice, you know, is always to ask questions, definitely do your research and homework. Um, you know, if there's any upside to the pandemic, take advantage of those virtual events at FITM. We're offering so, so many virtual events. Uh, do campus tours. That's always a good way to research your college. You know, once you're on campus, you'll get a feel of know, okay, this is going to be my home for the uh, next uh, four years. Uh, for the younger students, uh, you know, start your research early, you know, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, take advantage of those summer programs. That's also a great way to really get a feel for your uh, uh, colleges and really get to know if it's going to be a good fit for you. Awesome. Thank you so much to our reps for sharing all of that great advice. Um, so just kind of a couple of different things before we end our session today. Um, I want to thank all of our college reps for taking the time to share about their institutions with our prospective students. Um, definitely very helpful information while students are going through this process. Students out there joining us tonight, thank you for joining. Definitely reach out to our college reps if you have any questions, you want to know more about their school, you found anything interesting today, definitely reach out with any questions and try to visit their campus, whether in person or virtually. Um, just a few housekeeping announcements before we end the session. There is a quick survey for all of our students joining us. We just want to hear some feedback on how the session went for you. Five questions when you close out the session. And this recording will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Denver. Again, I just want to thank everybody for attending and also taking the time to join us today. Um, best of luck to our prospective students as they navigate the college search process and also um, best of luck to our admissions representatives as well. Um, stay safe, everybody, and have a good day. Bye, everyone.